My name is Brandon Sorbaugh. I'm a fifth year PhD student in the Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering and I'm working on the ARC reactor project and ARC is a compact tokamak that uses high fields. Um, so what do those things mean? So first, a tokamak is a donut shaped device that uses magnetic fields to confine a fusion plasma. And so when I say high field, the high field refers to the magnetic field and tokamaks have about over 50 years of research that have been done on them. And they're right now kind of the leading contender um, to, have, to achieve net fusion power on the grid in the world fusion community. So the high field approach that we have here is to increase this magnetic field so that our confinement is better. And what does that do? So in the last 50 years, scientists have found that the amount of fusion power that you can get out of a tokamak scales roughly as the volume, or the size of the device, times the fourth power of the magnetic field. And so that's huge. Right there you can see there's an enormous win that you can gain. If you double the magnetic field, then you can get a 16-fold increase in the power. Or if you flip that around, you could say you can keep the power the same way or build a device that's 16 times smaller. Um, so that's why we want to build a high field device. And you might ask, why has this not been done before? Because this concept has been around for a while. Well, the reason is that high field uh, is tough to achieve. And present devices, um, like here at MIT, which has historically been a home of high field research, use copper. Um, so this, I have, this is a copper bus bar that I have in my hand here. And there's been designs for um, bigger devices that have high field, like Ignitor, which also came out of MIT. But the problem with, with using copper is that copper has a lot of power losses inside these um, conductors that are used to make the magnets. And just recently, in the last five or 10 years, there's been a lot of advances in commercially available high temperature superconductors. And so my left hand here, I have a little strand of high temperature superconductor. And this is a material that you can put current through and you will have no resistive losses, so no power loss through this. Um, and the special part about this particular type of superconductor is that it can exist at very high fields. And it allows something like the arc design to be built. So um, I, I should also mention that if you were to cool both of these down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, you could put the same amount of current through each of these. So there's this big copper conductor and here's this tiny, tiny little piece of superconductor. So using the superconducting technology, we designed a pilot uh, fusion power plant that we called ARC. Um, and the whole uh, impetus behind ARC was to make the whole thing smaller. So if you look right here, there's a person. So this isn't the size of a car or anything. It's the size of maybe a small house, um, but it's much smaller than current reactor designs that use low temperature superconductors that have to operate at low field. So down here, we have ITER, which is the current state of the art. It's a device being built in the south of France by the world fusion community. And here's a scale drawing of ARC next to that. So our hope is that the next design iteration after ITER has been built could be something that is arc-like and could be about a tenth of the volume of ITER. And that tenth of volume could, uh, means that you can build a device for much, much cheaper and hopefully much faster as well. So by using this, these tiny little tapes to build our magnet coils in arc, we're hoping to enable something that's cheaper and faster to, develop, to development and will hopefully accelerate the, um, the path of fusion to becoming a viable source of electricity uh, in the future.